Uh, yeah, it's uh, not many times you play, you know, more than four hours of tennis a day. So uh, it's obviously a challenge, but I felt good and I felt uh, physically strong. So I'm very happy about that. And uh, the match was so close back and forth all the time. And um, in the fifth set, I just got a really good start and kept building on it. So very happy with the level I showed in the fifth and that uh, the body was uh, holding up for it. Very good. Thank you. Name and affiliation, gentlemen. Bing, bing. Michael, go ahead. Oh, Casper, congratulations. Michael Lewis, uh, Greenville Daily Reflector. Uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, really seemed like a huge turning point in the match into that third set. He's at 6-5, 40 love. Looks like he's about to go up two sets to one, and you managed to fight your way back. Can you take us through that a little bit, how you recovered from that when the crowd was going nuts and looked like he was about to go up two sets to one? Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's a bit coincidental and you, you need the margins on your side, which happened in the third set for me. I don't exactly remember all the set points, but uh, he didn't. He obviously had serve at 40 love, so it's a game he feels like he should win. Uh, but I made some good returns and made him play for it, and then he made a couple mistakes. So that's what happens, you know, if you win, you know, let's say two of those 40 love points, you're suddenly, he's suddenly at 40, 40-30 uh, and he'll feel the pressure a little bit more. So I just thought, you know, tennis is a game where it's not over until it's over. Obviously, we don't play on the time limit, so every point matters in the end. And um, today I was happy and, like I said, a little bit fortunate in the third set that I was able to turn it around. That doesn't happen very often either. So, uh, and I played a magnificent tiebreak and... Um, yeah, I mean, I, you could see that he was bothered by lo losing that game when he came up to the tiebreak. So I took care of the chances that I got. And um, and then, he, you know, he, he kept going. He was strong. I thought maybe it was going to be tough for him to keep going after losing a set like that. But he kept fighting and kept going on in the fourth and played well. And yeah, in the fifth, I just got a great start. And like I said, kept building on it. David, David. DavidKaneTennis.com. When you when you do lose a, th a close set like that, how are you able to compartmentalize? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously it's best of five sets. So today is a clear example that you should never, you know, give up even though you're down or the score is close or whatever. So, I mean, I lost uh, the second and the fourth were tough sets to lose. Obviously, seven six and seven five. So. Obviously, I wish I could win in three sets, three straight sets, but uh, you just take it as it comes. And uh, I think <clears throat> this year's Roland Garros really taught me well how to play five setters. And uh, I only played one one match that I played went to the fifth set, but um, you know how you sort of uh, set up a match and how you're thinking during a match when you're playing potentially five sets. So. And in the fifth set, I just, you know, thought this is uh, why I work hard every day to play well in these moments. And um, I, I guess I that helped a little bit. <laughs> um, you, played, you played Tommy a few times now at sort of different stages. You're both the same age, but he's been getting better and better. Uh, I pushed you, obviously, today. Could you talk a little bit about your impressions of his improvements and, and what you see as... as his strengths and why he's doing so well now on tour. I think he's one of the best movers on tour. He moves really well. Um, he's quick, he's strong, obviously. And then, you know, he has <clears throat> this sort of flat shot, especially from the back end. It sort of uh, looks sometimes like he's shoveling <laughs> in a way. I don't know how to explain other than that. I, it's obviously a really good shot, so it's not no disrespect saying it looks like he's shoveling, but it's sort of like very flat and he can accelerate and also kind of push it low and, and flat back to you. So it's tough to um, attack from the back or when you're playing to his backhand side, it's tough to attack his shots. So that I think is one of his strengths. And the, the forehand is uh, at times really dangerous and sometimes he gives you some free points like every player does obviously. But uh, And yeah, like I said, I think his movement is one of the best on tour and he gets to many shots and he reads the game well. So it's you're going to have to expect to play you know not one winner but maybe three or four to win the point so that's obviously sometimes a bit frustrating when you feel like you're hitting good shots and he's there and gets everything back and reading the game well so he has a complete package he's good from both sides good serve and good return of serve so I mean there's not not too many big weaknesses in uh, his game but I think we all have our weaknesses and uh, I'm uh, just like anyone else when it comes to this David 
Tommy talked before the match about just how professional you are, and you do seem to carry yourself with a great deal of professionalness and seriousness. I'm curious if that is a level of discipline that has come easy to you over the years, or if that's something you've had to work for. Uh, I think it's been... I've got a lot of help from my father at a young age because he knew what this life and this career, if you want to have a good one, what it costs and what it takes. So already when I was 12 years old and I quit doing other sports, um, and said I wanted to be a professional tennis player. I think he sort of said, okay, then I'm going to do as best as I can to help you. And uh, he knew already that, or he knew that already from that age I needed to be serious. So even though I'm only 23, I feel like I've living this, I've been living a uh, professional tennis player life for 10 years already. And obviously it's, it's paid off well, and the last two years has been, they have been great for me. But uh, yeah, it's been 10 years already, sort of, not on tour, but like living as an athlete. And uh, I hope there will be 10 more and hopefully even more. But um, yeah, it's, uh, even though I'm young, like I said, I sort of feel like I'm going into what can be considered maybe like sort of that I'm halfway in my professional career already and that the next 10 or hopefully 12, 13, 14 years can be, uh, I can s stay focused and determined and, um, and uh, serious, I guess, in my career. You love golf and that's another pretty serious, calm pursuit. I mean, do you have like a cheat day where you kind of can let, let loose a little bit? Yes, for sure. And I think we all need that uh, either if it's, obviously I enjoy playing golf, I do other stuff as well, but um if it's just you know having a, a couple of cheat meals or whatever just to think about something else uh, because when you're on tournaments and when you're traveling you think about what you do all the time uh, when it even you know just when it comes to what you what you're eating when you're sleeping all these things to keep your mind focused and your body ready for the next match so it's very nice some days uh, throughout the year to sort of just let go of that and do something else be a normal person and uh, if you know junk food is your thing or playing golf is your thing or I don't know whatever it is I think uh, we all sort of um, do it I guess uh, a couple of days a year okay. Michael Westman. <laughs> I couldn't quite hear your whole encore interview but it sounded like you said something we were talking about the crowd uh, that it was fair it was amazing but fair and they were rooting for him obviously an American at the US Open on, on that court yeah. um, what was the atmosphere like and obviously you knew most people were, were pulling for him but what was the atmosphere like for you being you know in that kind of moment it was great, and uh, I think the biggest court that I played on here before was 17, so uh, this was completely different. I did practice on it a couple of times you know, leading into the event, but um, I believe it was the old center court back in the days. That's what my father told me, and it was a really cool court, cool atmosphere, and um, uh, obviously it wasn't completely full, but it was pretty close to being full at the, at the end there, and uh, like I said, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty loud, the court. Um, People don't, they don't stay quiet during the whole point here in the States. That's uh, something I noticed, but it's fun. I mean, you get used to it, but in the beginning it was a little bit like, okay, aren't they going to you know, be silent when we play? It was a little different because I never experienced that before, but I guess that's the vibe here. And when everyone, I haven't felt that until today, uh, that uh, how much noise there is in New York. And all, I know all the players who play on the big courts have been talking about it, how, how noisy it can get. So I felt it a little bit today and... Like I said, they were cheering on him, but also when I was playing good shots and playing good rallies, they were cheerful for me. So it wasn't, uh, I didn't feel like I was playing him plus, you know, eight or 10,000 people more. I was felt like I was playing him. And when he did good shots, yes, for sure. But uh, I have felt worse, to put it this way. So uh, it, was, uh, it was a fair crowd.